Here are the books that I've been reading recently. Hello, welcome back to my channel, Christian Faith and Fiction. My name's Lou, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the books that I've been reading recently. I record my thoughts on the books as I'm going along. So these books are from February and March. Um, some books I've just got a rating for, but the, the ones that are listed as Christian fiction, I have a uh, short review for them. So let's see how I got on. Hi all, it's the 16th of February. Um, so far this month I have finished rereading uh, three Agatha Christie books, um, A Murder Is Announced, Cards On The Table and Cat Among The Pigeons. Cat Among The Pigeons actually had some um, bad language in it, three instances of that, not the F word but some B words, um, so be aware of that one. Um, my favourite probably of those, I don't know, I will get, probably give them all about um, 4.5 out of 5 in terms of the mystery but Cat Among the Pigeons I dropped down uh, just because of that instance of banned language. In terms of the Christian fiction that I've been reading um, I'm in the middle of reading um, The Vanishing at Loxby Manor which I think is probably going to be a clean uh, a clean book rather than a Christian fiction book. It feels like that so far. There doesn't seem to be much spiritual content. And then I'm starting to reread um, Orphan Song by Julian Bronte Adams. And yeah, so I don't know how far I'm going to get in February. So I might combine February, March's recent reads vlogs together. So I've got a bit more to talk about. Uh, that's how far that's how I am gone so far. Oh, and I'm halfway through All of You Always by Lindsay Harrell. So, yeah. Hey, it's the 23rd of February, and this week I finished two books that I was reading through. And the first one is All of You Always by Lindsay Harrell. This is quite a short book, but it was taking me quite a while to get through um, and get into reading it. Um, it was a good book, though. Uh, it's really I thought for most of the way through that it was going to be uh, just a clean romance uh, contemporary romance but uh, towards the end there was a little bit of um, spiritual content that was delivered well um, so it's, I would say it's still more towards the clean side rather than the Christian fiction side but there's something in there. This book follows a character called Bella who's mum sends her to Walker Beach to um, close the deal on buying uh, this uh, guy Ben's um, inn. Her mum wants to buy it up and then develop the land along the beach and uh, Ben doesn't want to sell it because it's his um, family's inn and so uh, the mum sends Bella to go in and close the deal and get persuade Ben to um, sell. Then obviously when she arrives there um, he's a lot more attractive than she realised and things start to kind of develop between them but she hasn't told him who she really is. He doesn't know that she's the daughter of the person who's been pestering him to sell and so yeah that develops as you can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I enjoyed the characters. I felt like there was quite a lot of com uh, complexity to them. Um, again, short book with quite a lot going on into it. Um, I was struggling to read for ages and I couldn't work out if it was just me or if it's a book. Um, so I flipped from reading the physical copy to the, listening to the ebook being read by my accessibility features on my iPad. I can turn on this text-to-speech um, and listen to that at twice the speed and I got through it in one afternoon and evening for the second half and it had taken me weeks to read the first half so I think it was just I'm not into reading so much at the moment I'm just more listening um, but yeah I think it was it was pretty good it, it um, yeah I'm still looking for a romance book that a contemporary romance that has a really good 
solid spiritual content that it's like with mature Christians. I, if you have any good recommendations for those, leave them down in the comments because um, I keep picking up contemporary romances and finding them more on the clean spectrum rather than on the Christian spectrum. And whilst that's great, because, you know, I've had enough times in the past of picking up books and finding sex scenes that you don't want to really read and all that kind of thing. Um, so it's great to know that something's going to be clean. But I'm still looking for something that's got some weight to the spiritual side. And I gave this one 4.25 out of 5 stars. And on that theme, I also have just finished reading The Vanishing at Loxby Manor, which is also a clean um, historical romantic mystery. Again, not a huge amount of spiritual content, but this was a five star read for me. Um, I found it really compelling. I loved the mystery to it. I love that there's like a complexity of different mysteries going on. Um, I love the Regency setting of it. I loved the relationship between um, Charity and Piers. And I, um, I love that there is some uh, small amount of disability representation in that Charity has is hard of hearing in certain situations. And she's been through some stuff in the past that gives her some issues and things that she's got work through and so has peers um, so there was a lot of things going on within it that made it um, fly past for me I listened to it on audiobook and I definitely would recommend this one if you like clean historical romantic suspense type of books the story follows Charity who uh, returns back to her childhood friend's home after being in India and she, um, on the night that she returns, her friend disappears and it's thought that she has eloped with the stable hand. But um, Charity doesn't think that's what has happened. And so there's a lot of mysteries going on. Um, there, her and Pierce were engaged but or were in a relationship, but then it broke off while she was in India. And so he turns back up and there's kind of conflict and difficulties with that and there's all sorts of odd things going on in the house and with their friends going on around them and in the abbey nearby and all sorts of things so yeah definitely was worth it so five out of five stars for that one. I have also finished reading The Magician's Nephew which I've been keeping a a reading vlog about my thoughts on it and the similarities I can see between it and the the um, book of Genesis so I, I will link that one in the description below if I haven't already posted it I'll link it afterwards um, but I think I, that one's going to come out before this video does but yeah I enjoyed this um, book reading it through again I read it as a child I've read it since then I think and I've always enjoyed it um, so it's difficult to, for me to give anything except five out of five stars um, on Goodreads but I think probably I'll give it 4.5 out of 5 in my blog just because the story is a little bit it's a little bit rambling in terms of the narrative of the story but the kind of it's a it's a prequel to the Lion Witch and the Wardrobe so it gives the origin story of um, the witch and how they found Narnia and how the wardrobe came about, um, all those kind of things. And so it's really interesting. Um, but if you've never read a book um, by C.S. Lewis, uh, or The Chronicles of Narnia before, I would probably start with The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and then go back and read this one because it will... The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe is probably um, more of a classic in terms of storyline. And um, this one is great for those who already love um, the Chronicles of Narnia but chronologically this is obviously the first one so yeah it was really good it's the 3rd of March I have finished listening to a couple of audiobooks this week uh, I listened to the Mary Poppins audiobook which is narrated by Olivia Coleman and um, I enjoyed that one again I think I 
might have given it about four out of five stars. Um, it's quite different from the film, if you are familiar with the film. Uh, it's more episodic, so each chapter is like a short story based around the characters of Mary Poppins and Jane and Michael, and then there's they've got two younger twins as well. Uh, so you can see where this the film has taken like bits from, but the overall story is there's not really an overall story. It's like just different scenarios. So yeah, that's fun to listen to though. And I've also um, another reread for me is Orphan Song by Gillian Bronte Adams, which is a um, Christian fantasy book and one I really enjoyed the first time. Um, I give it five out of five stars again this time. Um, I loved listening to it on the audiobook. Uh, there is a certain amount of kind of fighting and things involved in it, but other than that, um, it's a clean book. It follows uh, Birdie, who is a young teenager, I think, um, and she discovers she has a gift where she can hear songs in the air and she can also sing out songs and different things happen so she's got um i wouldn't really call it a magical power i'd say it's more like a supernatural ability and um it's like a kind of medieval time period in a fantasy world um with griffins and some talking animals and various things going on in that um it was a really good book the first time around and I did a, a full review for it. So if I remember, I'll try and um, post that video down in the description box. Um, I want to continue on with the se series though. So I'm going to continue this month listening to the second book, Songkeeper. Hey, it's the 28th of March. And this week I finished uh, True To You by Becky Wade. Uh, this follows um, Nora, who is, she is a genealogist and historical village owner. And she um, is really into romance in um, this television series that she watches and in books. And also um, Navy SEAL John Lawson, who is... Um, and adopted, he's adopted and he's um, looking to try and find his birth mother and so he comes to Nora for help. Uh, I actually really enjoyed this book, um, Contemporary Romance. It was fairly light most of the way through but then there were some really heavier moments that took me by surprise as well. I loved the characters, I loved how kind of quirky they were and they really stood out to me as individual people. I love the spiritual content in this book. I think it had the Christian content that I was looking for in a contemporary. And um, I felt like the middle of the book, the plot kind of meandered a little bit, but the ending was really, really good and just hit me and brought a tear to my eye. So um, I did really enjoy it. I think I will continue with the series. Uh, I gave it, I think 4.75 out of five stars. It's a really popular um, book among Christian fiction circles, so I was glad that I actually liked it in the end. It's been sitting on my shelf for quite some time, and I was a little bit intimidated in just in case I didn't like it. Um, but yeah, it was good. And the final books that I've finished uh, in March or just recently um, was The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. I have put out a full reading vlog for this book, so I'm not going to go into details now, but I give it five out of five. Thoroughly enjoyed rereading this book again and um, looking for the, all the uh, similarities between it and the Easter story. And then throughout the whole of Lent, I've been reading Risen by Angela Hunt, which is the novelization of the, um, the film Risen which was written by Paul, Paul Aolo, I can't pronounce that, uh, and the screenplay by Kevin Reynolds and, and Paul Aolo. I think that's probably not at all how you're supposed to pronounce that surname, but it was, I enjoyed the book. I enjoyed um, looking at 
the characters, all the different kind of characters that popped up from the gospel stories. It is following a soldier who is trying to track down what happened to the body of Jesus after it was put in the tomb and it disappears. And so he's going and interviewing all these different characters from Mary Magdalene, um, Joseph of Arimathea, all, you know, all the different ones that are from the story. He goes and interviews them to find out what they know about it and to see if they've taken the body. In the book, there are two main characters. One is Clavius, who is a soldier, and then Rachel, who is a kind of backslidden Jew, I guess. Um, she has a faith, but she doesn't kind of live it out. So you are seeing how their spiritual journey progresses throughout this um, this book. I, en I enjoyed it, as I said. I was more keen on the, the biblical aspects of this story rather than the romantic aspects. Um, I liked both of the characters individually, but I just felt the romance was a bit odd. Um, I've been told that the romantic elements are not in the film, but I haven't had a chance to watch that one yet. So when I do, I'll see whether I prefer the book or the film. Um, seems to me that people are split on their decision of which one they like the best. Let me know down in the comments if you have a preference. I definitely thought it was worth reading and as a, um, a different take on the Easter story. I like Angela Hunt's style of writing. I find it easy to read and often the chapters, some of the chapters are quite short, so that helps as well. So altogether, I've read some good books recently. Uh, I reread quite a few books as well. Um, and enjoyed those ones. So let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them, and if you have a recommendation for a book that you have read in the last couple of months that you really enjoyed, especially if it's a five star one, and even more so if it's a Christian fiction book. Thank you to everyone who has liked, commented, uh, subscribed, or shared my videos. I really appreciate that. And um, I hope you have a really great reading week and take care. See you soon. Bye.